Hyrule, a kingdom that has endured the test of time. It's been through many changes throughout the ages, evolving and ever expanding its rich lore and history. But sometimes, I sit back and wonder, who set up the foundation for this kingdom to prosper like we know it today? Now before we go any further, yes of course it was the people of Skyloft that founded Hyrule from what we know. But how exactly did it go down? Who set up the groundwork for the religion, geography, economy, language, and hierarchy of this amazing land? I'll be starting off with who came up with the religion of the Hylians. This is an easy one. Obviously the goddess Hylia and the ancestors of the people of Skyloft came up with everything, right? Well, actually it's a bit more complicated than that. The people of Skyloft worship and pray to the goddess Hylia, whereas the Hylians worship the three golden goddesses. It seems like a lot changed in their religion soon after the Skyloftians returned to the surface, but why exactly would this happen? Looking at the story of Skyward Sword, we can find out that the goddess Hylia renounced her godlike form, causing her to be reincarnated as Zelda. This was not known to the Skyloftians until Link passed the information down to Zelda's father, Gipora. We can find evidence of this at the beginning of the game when Link finds the Goddess Sword. Gipora talks about the Goddess Hylia like she's still around. He even admits to Link that the apocalypse demise caused the first time around is a complete mystery to him. With no goddess to be worshipped at the end of Skyward Sword, the Skyloftians had no god to pray to other than the three golden goddesses still known to actually be gods. Now that we've established that, let's get into who actually made these changes to the Hylian's religion. Our main person of interest is... Gipora. He is the only known legend keeper in Skyward Sword. In Hyrule Historia, next to a picture of Gipora, it states that the keepers of legend protect the secrecy of the ancient documents about the surface and the goddess sword. Along with this, Gipora himself tells Link that the knowledge of the goddess sword's location and existence is only known to a select few in Skyloft. Looking a bit deeper into it, Gipora is one of the most knowledgeable people known to Skyloft, next to the fortune teller that is. This knowledge is what makes him best suited to be the headmaster of the Night Academy. He also makes sure the wing ceremony goes off without a hitch, which is technically a religious event in the eyes of the Skyloftians. To further prove my point here, in Hyrule Historia, Gipora is seen holding a green book. On the front is Hylian text that translates to theology. Theology is a study of the nature of God and religious belief. Knowing all this, we can infer that Gapora was most likely the person to set up the foundation for what later became the religion of Hyrule, with a bit of help from people like Link and Zelda. Now let's move on to the geography of Hyrule. Who the heck came up with all the names of the regions and who mapped the area? To be honest, this is a very easy one and it kind of stands out like a sore thumb. You may call me Captain Obvious here, but it was none other than the Gorons. To be more specific, Gorko and Golo, two Goron archaeologists who spent every waking moment studying the surface and its connection to Skyloft. These two can be found many times throughout the game. Well, Gorko that is. He is seen in each region of the surface in Skyward Sword each time studying something different. It's very possible that the Gorons mapped the surface long before the goddess statue came down from Skyloft, leaving them with nothing else to study but the civilization in the sky only heard of in legends. After the goddess statue came down along with most of its inhabitants, Gorko and Golo most likely would have done anything to get information on where they came from and what it was like living in the sky leading them to trade information previously gathered about the surface with the Skyloftians, and trade for details about Skyloft. Now I'm not going to leave out Link here. Because of his travels to each region of the surface, it's very likely that he helped in creating a map of each of the regions, giving them more details on secret locations and names of certain landmarks and creatures found in these areas. These primitive maps of Hyrule served as stepping stones for each era that came after it, changing names of locations to better suit the times and adding more detail throughout the ages. 
Next up is the economy of Hyrule. This was without a doubt set up by the merchants of Skyloft. They are the only known beings in Skyward Sword that have set up shop and established a form of currency called Rupees. In Skyloft, you can find the Bazaar. This is a central hub for most of the shops in Skyloft, and boy do they have a variety of merchandise and different services. A scrap shop used to upgrade items, a potion shop, a gear shop, an item check, and fortune teller. Heck, they even have a restaurant inside this place. The bazaar isn't the only place in Skyloft you can find shops like this though. Outside there's actually a floating shop run by Beetle, and if you travel to a nearby island in the sky you can also find a place called the Lumpy Pumpkin that serves pumpkin soup. Each of these places accept rupees, showing that they have established a solid form of currency. And as we can see, these rupees have lasted through the history of Hyrule. Every last one of these shop owners passed down their traditions. Rupin with his gear shop paved the way for every item shop that came after him. Love and her husband created potions that would be passed down for generations to come. And those are just two of the shops that had an influence on Hyrule's economy. Okay, enough with that. Let's carry on over to the language of the Hylians and how it was established. The Hylian language has been changed so many times throughout the series, switching back and forth between them. Let's take Skyward Sword for example. In the game they use what can be called the Ancient Hylian Alphabet. A very similar version of this can be found in A Link Between Worlds. The next game in the timeline, Minish Cap, is confusing when it comes to this, as they use a similar version of the Hylian text found in The Wind Waker. Because Nintendo kind of messed things up in this category, there isn't much to go off of, so let's just put it this way. The Skyloftians simply expanded on the Hylian language as time went on, refining it as much as they needed to. I don't believe it was any one person that helped develop the Hylian language, but I do believe that it's very likely to have been a collective effort in the grand scheme of things later on in the development of Hyrule. It's also very possible that the creatures from each of the regions helped in deciphering pieces of the lost language of the surface that the Skyloftians knew nothing about. This would bring new vocabulary to the newly founded Hyrule, while also keeping the old traditions passed down from the people of Skyloft. We've finally made it to the end, the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule. The first thing the Skyloftians would need to set up is a hierarchy in which the kingdom would follow. We shall go over the obvious first. Gipporah already being the headmaster of the Night Academy would assume the role of king and or leader of the people. It's also very possible that Link may have taken on this role after Gipporah ended his reign as ruler. Since Zelda is Gipporah's daughter, she would become the princess or queen of the people of Hyrule. These three people would set up the foundation for the Hyrule royal family. Next up would be the king's go-to men. This would be none other than Oland and Horwell. They are both instructors at the Knight Academy in Skyloft and look up to the headmaster. In Skyloft these two can be seen as the next chain of command after Gipora, making them a perfect fit for the job. Now this kingdom wouldn't be complete without some form of defense. The Knight Academy in Skyloft would be a perfect fit for this one. We can assume that these knights later became the Knights of Hyrule. These knights would have been led by Aegis, also known as the Knight Commander of Skyloft. With his vast knowledge in combat and Link's skills in the field, the two could have possibly collaborated on a training regimen to defend the Kingdom of Hyrule. Lastly would be the shops and merchants that we've already discussed, and then the residents of Hyrule. With the combined help of each Skyloftian, they soon formed what is now known as the Kingdom of Hyrule. Each person played a pivotal role in its creation. Too many for one video, to be honest. To summarize my theory, Gaporo was made the King of Hyrule after its founding. With his knowledge of theology, he created a religion better suited for the people of Hyrule. The Gorons Gorko and Golo helped map the various regions of the land, giving the Hylians a base to work off of. The economy of Hyrule carried on the traditions of the Skyloftians, creating shops like the Gear Shop and Potion Shop and retained the same currency as before. The Hylian language was a derivative of the language of the Skyloftians, 
possibly changing after speaking to creatures found on the surface and other texts found in the ruins of the people before them. Soon after returning to the surface, the Skyloftians decided to form a kingdom in which the same hierarchy was used from the Isles of the Goddess, soon forming what we know as the Kingdom of Hyrule today. Now I've just scratched the surface on these topics. If you guys would like me to go in depth on any one of these, feel free to let me know down below and I'll make a series dedicated to exploring these perplexing mysteries. Anyhow, I've been your guide RMFH, you guys all have a good one, and remember, the key word in these videos is theory, and that's all this is. Peace out.